Whether you're a beer enthusiast, a wine connoisseur, a coffee addict, a tea fanatic, a spirits or liquors fan, or a Coca-Cola lover, chances are you've never spent even a minute to reflect on how these drinks got to your table. Fortunately, Oxford graduate Tom Standage spent a few years of his life exploring the topic. He previously worked as a science and technology writer for The Guardian, and has been the editor for The Economist. His conclusion? You can tell the history of our world by telling the history of six of our favorite drinks. 1. Beer, the drink of the civilized man. Beer was discovered accidentally as early as the Fertile Crescent Ice Age around 10,000 BC. The people living there found out that gruel made from grain soaked in water turned into an intoxicating drink after only a couple of days. And they loved it so much that they decided to produce it. Here's where things get really interesting. This is one of the reasons why they resolved to settle, farm, and eventually store grains. You read that right. If it wasn't for that sparkling feel when drinking beer, people might have never discovered agriculture. Among other things, beer might be one of the reasons they were a civilization in the first place. 2. Wine, a symbol of status and democracy. Unlike the Mesopotamians, the ancient Greeks didn't like beer. Possibly because they knew beer was as old as the Neanderthals and considered themselves just too new age for it. More importantly, as you know, Greece is geographically blessed with the perfect climate, one that made it possible for the ancient Greeks to fall in love with another alcoholic beverage, wine. As you can read in Plato, Euripides, and Aristophanes, among others, wine was the drink of choice for the intellectuals at the time. Now, the Greeks were much too smart not to use this divine drink to earn some political points. So, wine soon became one of the main ways to disseminate their culture and countries around them. Greeks distributed jars and amphorae of wine adorned with Greek mythological motifs. The result? The myth of the Greek god of wine Dionysus is present throughout the Mediterranean coast. A few centuries later, when the ancient Romans invaded the Balkan Peninsula, wine became a symbol of democracy. 3. Alcoholic spirits, invented by Arabs, drank by Europeans. In case you don't know, the word alcohol is of Arabic origin. It is the name the medieval Arab alchemists gave to the black powder of purified antimony, which was used as a cosmetic to paint or stain the eyelids. Even stranger, the word was used to refer only to a specific type of alcoholic drinks as it got a new meaning in the world of beverages, the distilled ones. The Arab alchemists invented the process of distillation as well. The Europeans, on the other hand, loved to drink them for two reasons. First and foremost, because the European alchemists, probably in a futile attempt to use this as an excuse to their wives, came up with the pseudoscientific idea that distilled wine had healing powers and could cure everything, from paralysis to heart diseases. Secondly, because, sugar, after the creation of rum, made it a perfect combination of alcohol and the very first global drink. Now, just like the Greeks used wine to extend their culture throughout the Mediterranean, the Europeans used spirits to expand their influence across the globe. One could even argue that Europeans conquered the Americas driven by the desire to acquire more sugar for their rums. No wonder sugar became the most important crop on the Caribbean islands soon after the Europeans colonized them. Soon enough, the demand for spirits was so high that Caribbean rum became a form of currency. Far cheaper than brandy and much stronger than it, rum quickly established itself as the North American colonists' favorite drink. And, consequently, it played a large part in the American War of Independence. 4. Coffee, a wake-up call for the intellectuals. Once again invented by the Arabs, coffee became popular in Europe during the 17th century, and you won't believe why. It was because of contaminated water and wine. You see, having boiling water as an ingredient, it was safer to drink coffee and wine than the often contaminated and germ-laden water. However, intellectuals didn't want to be intoxicated all the time, so they preferred to drink coffee to stay awake. Fast forward a few decades, and coffee houses were suddenly alive with spirited intellectual debates and political vigor. King Charles II of England, for example, 
wouldn't have returned from exile if not for the coffee houses at the time. Since they granted intellectuals unprecedented levels of freedom of speech, it was there that the supporters of the exiled king gathered and debated Oliver Cromwell and his controversial rule. When King Charles II came in power, he attempted to shut down the coffee houses altogether. Once in power, he was afraid that coffee houses would work against him, leading to his end in much a similar fashion as Cromwell did. And he wasn't wrong. The French Revolution started in the coffee houses of Paris. 5. Tea, the drink that created two empires. Chinese enjoyed tea for centuries, but, unfortunately, China wasn't interested in trading anything with Europe for most of history, believing that European goods were much inferior. That all changed when they started seeking more silver and gold in the 16th century, and before you could say no honey, please, the Dutch imported tea and the royal dynasties of Europe started drinking it. Since Britain was the largest colonial force in the world, by the end of the 17th century, tea was all the rage everywhere on the planet. Tea also made the rich richer. For example, one of the main state businesses of the East India Company was tea. And the high worldwide demand for the beverage helped the company to grow into what's possibly the largest corporation in history. At the height of its power, the company employed a small country and had a private army twice the size of the British military, while earning more money than the British government. However, when the Tea Act of 1773 allowed the company to export tea to the Americas tax-free, forcing local merchants to pay the import duties and raising the prices for American drinkers, enough was enough for the American colonists. Boston Tea Party, anyone? 6. Coca-Cola, Globalization and Bottle If spirits and tea incited America to fight for its independence, Coca-Cola helped it conquer the world. Initially intended for medicinal purposes, John Pemberton's drink soon grew to become America's favorite drink. However, nobody had even heard of it across the Atlantic and the Pacific before World War II. And then it happened, the first of Coca-Cola's great marketing campaigns. Robert Woodruff, then CEO of Coca-Cola, gave the order to every man in a uniform to get a bottle of Coca-Cola for five cents, wherever he is and whatever it costs the company. The rest, is history. In the Cold War, you see, Coca-Cola was the ultimate symbol of the free market and the power of the United States. Half a century later, it still is. Finally, as its title suggests, a history of the world in six glasses is not exactly a history of your everyday drinks, but a history of the world told through the perspective of six beverages. The book is written in a charming and absorbing style and never less than captivating from start to finish, the book takes the reader on an exceptional journey from an ice age to World War II without ever sounding tiresome or dull.